Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. And today we are talking about something on the discover, understand, overcome narcissistic abuse realm, which is the pity ploy and the narcissist. So I thought today we'd go back and talk more about some of the things that the narcissists do to abuse you, to lure you in, to keep you, to suck you back, to keep you there. So the pity ploy, what is it? The narcissist will often play the martyr. This is a thing they do well, and the covert narc does it really well. And it's it's one of the ways a narcissist will not only lure you in, but it'll keep you there, will manipulate you to stay, will play on your empathy so that you can't get away. And when you do get away, we'll use it to hoover you back in. And, and I think it's important to understand that your empathy is not at fault here. It's not a weakness and your empathy is not, and your sympathy and your compassion is not a weakness. It is a strength. However, it can be used against you. So it's important to understand where to place your empathy and who deserves your empathy and who does not. So they might have this sort of woe is me attitude that lures you back. They may even self-destruct. You'll just watch, they're like, say say you've after the discard and you've been apart, but there's some hoovering going on and you notice they're completely self-destructing. And it lures a person who is more of a care caregiving type of person. It, it triggers the need to protect the narcissist because we are groomed and trained by the narcissist to protect them at all cost, right? You know what I'm talking about if you've ever felt this, right? Um, attitudes they might have are things like, I do so much. You, you might hear things like, I, I do so much to whatever. I try so hard to whatever. I am um, I can't believe after all I've done that, right? When really we know they haven't done much, <laughs> but they say these things. They, they create a situation where no one's there for them, right? Poor them. They guilt you. And we'll talk more in detail about the guilt trip in a little bit because it's a little bit different, a little bit uh, more specific of a version. They share their suffering. We all want to share, we all want to share ourselves when we're feeling bad. That's different than sharing your suffering. In other words, they're asking you to take on a piece of their suffering so they don't have to be responsible and accountable for their own growth because they can't grow. They may even seem vulnerable. They may seem remorseful during a pity ploy. It doesn't last long, but there you go. It'll, it, it lures you back in. It works because it plays on your empathy, right? It plays on your compassion and your empathy. And your um, if you're a person who likes to fix others, it, <laughs> we know we need to heal that in ourselves, but we're not talking about that right now. And we can another time, definitely. But it does play on that. And it and it it pulls you. It makes you feel safe. And here, this isn't a good one because it makes you feel safe and close to the narcissist. It gives you what you've been wanting the whole time, which is connection and safety and a close relationship. And when someone is saying they need you, in the ways a pity ploy pulls you, it makes you have the feeling, or it can, that you're actually close to them. It brings you closer, which we all know what that is. That's just trauma bonds being set up. Because what happens after that is always a devalue. It's not like this is a change of heart. It looks, when it's a Hoover, it looks like a change of heart, or it looks like an understanding. And it it's just a Hoover, guys. They play on your sympathy, and it makes them seem like they need you. And who doesn't want to feel needed in life, right? We all want to feel needed, but it's a toxic need. And in fact, they probably do need you. They need your supply. But being needed in a healthy way versus being needed in a toxic way is very, very different. It's important to understand and be aware, especially if you are trying to leave or if you're in a Hoover situation, when you're well out, you probably get this. You're not responsible for anyone else's emotional state except your own, right? And it makes you, the guilt trip, all of this pity ploy guilt trip stuff, it makes you feel responsible for their emotional state. That's how you know something's off. When someone's making you feel responsible for their emotional state, 
it, there's something toxic about it. It doesn't necessarily make them a narcissist, but it certainly means they're guilt tripping you. Silent treatment can be a form of guilt trip. Sometimes it's a form of punishment. Sometimes it's a guilt trip because it's like, it, it makes them kind of this wounded animal, you know, this wounded victim that, um, it, that they, they're so shut down, they can't even talk. They have nothing to say because they're so, so wounded and injured by the situation. And really what it can create in you is the fawn response, you know, um, the anxiety response of fawning and pleading for them to, so it gives them supply, right? It plays right into it. Point out ways that you're not there for them, even though you are actually bending over backwards to try and help them, even when they're pushing you away, right? They bring up past hurts. This is another way that people will guilt trip. They'll bring up the past. They'll drag up the past. Not in not in things that are unresolved. The things that are actually should be resolved. So it's different than bringing up the past when something's unresolved and you have to keep repeating yourself and repeating yourself because it's not being resolved. It's not talked about. It's not discussed. That's a little bit different than bringing up the past when it's minor things or actually... A narcissist will bring up the past, but what they're bringing up is past gaslightings and past projections. They're not actually often bringing up real situations. Or they bring up the one thing that does has wounded them, and you know it's real, like an abusive parent they might have had or something that they'll bring up, and they'll use that one thing to get away with anything they want. So they don't have to be responsible because they've had this horrible thing happen. And so therefore they're triggered and therefore you're supposed to do X, Y, Z to make them feel better. Oh yeah. And we talked about this. I've given up so much for you. I've changed my whole life for you. I've lived my whole life for you. And this is, and this is the thanks I get. Yeah. So you may feel, you actually may feel disappointed in them. You may feel like it's your fault or your responsibility. You may feel that their emotional well-being is your responsibility or the situation is your responsibility. You um, may feel like you are doing things against your own moral code. This is how you know you're being manipulated, really, and you're being guilt-tripped. Your love is in question. There's another way that they may guilt-trip you, and you will notice that they're always questioning whether you love them or not. And I don't mean after an argument or when you're having a rough time. I mean all the time. Another way you may know that you're being manipulated by someone who is guilt tripping you is you cannot set boundaries out of fear of hurting their feelings. I don't mean fear of like physical fear from them. I mean, afraid to, afraid to wound them emotionally. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right? You feel obliged. So another way to know you're being guilt tripped in a relationship or manipulated is you feel an absolute need to oblige the other person and to please them. And I don't mean just being pleasing and having a nice relationship. I mean, please their every, please them out of fear, really. One thing that I think is a hard one to swallow <laughs> is all of this that I'm talking about, all of this guilt tripping and all of this pity ploy and what it does to you, besides if you're onto it, it's frustrating. If you are under its spell, it can make you feel really needed. It can make you feel like you are vitally needed in that relationship and you're super important to this person. And the way that they do it, and it's not like, it's not, it's often not super overly dramatic. It's just part of the way the relationship starts to flow. And that feeling of being needed is really a trauma bonded feeling. You're actually addicted. It's, you know, it's not a, it's, it's a difficult thing to recognize in yourself that the feeling of being needed is wrapped up with toxic relationships. So if you have that feeling like, but they need me, and you have all these other signs going on, it's it's time to start looking at it and getting yourself safe. Understanding that all of this is meant to keep you hooked. It's manipulation. All of the, the pity ploy and the guilt trip, they're manipulations. Basically, the whole thing gets your focus off of 
their bad and toxic behaviors. It gets your focus off of their abuse and it puts it onto your feelings of sympathy for them or needing to fix. So it, it's, I think it's important to understand it. A good warning to anyone who is newly discarded, especially if they've been with a covert narc, to just beware of the pity ploy. Just, just know it's maybe going to come and what it looks like and that any attempt at gaining your sympathy is a hoover. It's a hoover in the form of a pity ploy. You may even have the experience where you can totally relate to what they're saying because you know it's a tragic abuse they've had in their past or something that actually did happen to them. And so you can see why they are the way they are and then start to make excuses as to why they behave the way they do. And that's the one way that all of this, all this guilt trip and pity ploy, not only does it pull you in, but it keeps you trapped. So we have to realize that grown adults need to be responsible for their own emotional states, no matter what it kind of, I mean, we can help each other, but we're not responsible for each other's emotional well-being. We just need to be the best person we can be. And if the other person isn't doing that, then your emotional state is not being respected. You take care, you guys, and I will see you next time. And as always, I appreciate you being here and I wish you the best. Have a good day. Bye-bye.